Hey guys, it's Alyssa. Um, I am finally getting around to working on showing y'all how I use Trello. Um, and I thought it would be good for me to show y'all how I developed this and why it came to be this way. You know I like to keep things very simple and easy to get to. So when I was new, I had started a note section in my phone where I kept track of everybody. And I had A, B, C, and D people. And A people were the people who were actively listed or buyers who were pre-approved and we were actively looking at houses. So those are the people who get the majority of my attention and follow up. My B clients are those who maybe I had gone on a listing interview or they had gotten pre-approved but we haven't actually started the process of house hunting or listing their house. And then the C people are the people who told me, yeah, sometime this year, um, I need to buy or my lease ends in six months and then I'm going to start looking. So those are the people that are interested but not quite ready. And then the D people are is just anybody that ever talked to me about real estate. So these names will get so long when you are intentional about writing them down. You will be amazed at how many people actually ask you about real estate Um if you start tracking it. And these are people that you just need to keep on your radar. You know, make sure you're friends with them on social media. Make sure they're on your email campaign if you have one. Um, but obviously they talk to you about real estate because they didn't have anybody else to ask. So one day this is your future business. So it's important to remember these people also. Well, the notes section of my phone was just getting a little bit out of control and I was needing to make notes on people to remember when their leases were up and things like that. And that is when I discovered Trello. So I kind of want to walk you through that. So with Trello, you can have different boards. Think of them as like bulletin boards. So this board right here is my pipeline. So I'm going to show y'all how I made it and you can tweak it to be however you want to use it. You know I'm really simple so I just like to keep things very simple. But the active listings and active buyers would be my, um, my A category. These are the people that need you know the majority of my time. My pipeline board is my business right now and the things that need the, my attention in a timely manner. These are the people that are ready to go. So the, my pipeline is where I spend the majority of my time checking on my contracts and things like that. So let me walk you through what this looks like. Um, so I created this card right here and under each category you can make more cards. So for example, this is pre-listing. So anytime I have someone call me and say, hey Alyssa, we are thinking about selling, I immediately go into my Trello and you can also do it on your phone. And the app is super easy, super easy, user friendly, simple. It works almost as good as the computer. So you can do it on your phone. I usually do it while I'm on the phone with them. So I'll say that's great. So what you'll do is I made this seller card and I'll show you how to make it, but I just wanna show you what's inside of it. So when I click on my seller template, I put you know, um, who they were referred by and the shackle code for the listing. Eventually I'll have to fill that in. You'll also be able to make a transaction list and um, an after closing list. So you'll see over here that you can add checklists. It could be a checklist for anything. So whatever you like to do for checklists, you can have it on here. So that way, whenever I duplicate it, I just click the um, pin right here and I click copy and I'll say, sure, I'd be happy to come to your house. What's, what's your address? And they say, oh, it's 789 Dove Hollow. Just a tip, I have found it's important to me to put the address and their name. Um, just because it's, as you get more and more of these, it's easier to just look. Now it's added there and I always drag it underneath seller template just to keep seller template at the top. So that's the cool thing about these is now I would have Dove Hollow and I can fill out if anyone referred me and I can have the checklist on here. 
Um, and then after I go to their house, while I'm at their house, I just come down here and this is where I make notes. So this is where I'll put, you know, new countertops. If y'all listen to our episode where we talk about listing descriptions, I tell you that if the seller says something about their house, I write it word for word. So that way when I'm writing the description of their house, I make sure that it's exactly how they said it. So this is where I put, you know, gorgeous views from master bedroom. Um, and then, you know, a week or two later when I'm writing the listing description, I can open my Trello and see all the notes I made while I was walking in their house. So when I'm at the listing appointment walking through their house, I get out my Trello app and I start making notes and everything that I need is in here in this card, which is amazing. So now let's say I have my listing description done. It's in MLS. I can drag it over here to active listings. And so that's pretty awesome. So it, you, you can just pick things up and move them. Now, once it goes pending, you can drag it to your pending contracts. And what's cool here is you can click this um, pencil again and, I'm sorry, you can just double click it and you can add um, due dates. So right here. So say you're closing um, next month, June 19th, save. Now your due date is there and um, you'll see it right here. So when you have a bunch of pending, li pending listings, you'll have all the dates right in front of you. And I usually try to keep mine in order. So the ones that are closing the soonest, I keep those at the top and um, I keep them in order. So my brain knows what needs my attention first. I wanted to show y'all how to add another list because I do have one more column here and this would be my closed but not completed. So what does that mean? Um, that means that, you know, I closed this one, but I still have my stuff that I do after closing. So I have an after closing checklist, and this is just an example. This isn't everything. But, you know, maybe you need to add them to your database, remind them about Homestead, write a thank you letter, thank the lender. Um, and look, what's cool about this checklist, I guess this is like my Enneagram 3 showing, but as you check things off, it shows you like how far you are and then you're done, which I just, I just like how it looks, you know. But once I do all of those things that were on the closed but not completed checklist, I click on the pencil and I click archive. Now the cool thing is that it's not deleted. It will be there forever. And all you would have to do is go to this search bar up here and type in Dove Hollow and that card would come up. So if you needed anything off of it, now I've never needed anything off of it, but I know people out there have a fear of deleting things. Um, it will always be there. So it's just kind of nice. So this is my pipeline. Now I want to go back into showing you how I set up this template. So whenever I created the pre-listing card, I'll just start from scratch, okay? Add a list. This will be pre-listing. Um, then you would add a card within that, that category. So then you would type in seller template, add card. Now what do you want this template to look like? So for example, I made all of my sellers purple, purple right there. And then description, this is where you would write any information that you like to keep about your, your sellers. Keep it simple because you're not gonna use this as much as you think. I like to remember who referred them to me and I like to have my shackle codes in here and that's all I have. If you would like to add a checklist, you just click checklist and you can do you can name it whatever you want. So we can have transaction checklist. Now here's what's really cool y'all. You can add each item on your checklist individually. So I can put add the sign, lockbox, or if you have your list somewhere, um, you can copy and paste it. And you can just put them all in one and watch what happens. It will individualize them for you. How amazing is that? And then as you get through the transaction, you can just check off, 
the things that you need. Um, so that's how you would set up your template. And now every time you get a new seller, you just copy the card and change where it says seller template and enter the address. Um, and then when you click on it, everything is there for you. So you don't have to redo this every single time. Um, again, I like to keep the templates at the top. And you can do the same thing for your buyer templates. You know, if you have a checklist for buyers, that can go here. This is where I make my notes on things they have told me. Um, and then once that, so let's say I have a buyer. We can click copy and the buyer's name is Sally Sue. Um, so now I know Sally is actively looking at houses. And once Sally goes pending, I'm just going to drag her over here. But what's really cool about this is once I get a listing pending, I can drag it over here. But just from looking at this pipeline, I know how many listings and how many buyers I have pending just from the colors. So it's just a really simple, easy visual. My brain operates very simple. Um, and then if, if I have a land listing, I usually make the label green and I um, would just make it here, you know, you can copy it and I'll do, you know, lot four. And um, when you click on it, when you click on your card and you can just click edit label and I can make it green. So now I know this is a listing, but it's just land. It's not actually a house. So you can add labels, you can color code. Um, and then I'm just going to archive this whole list because I don't, I don't need it. This right here is what my pipeline looks like. And it just lets me know that these are the things that need my immediate attention. The other cool thing about this is that you can invite people right here that also have access to your board. So if you have an assistant or a team member, they can also come here and check on the checklist and say, oh, we're pending with Sally Sue. Let me click on her and see where we are in the checklist. Um, so it's just really, really nice that you can have it all in one place. Okay, so the pipeline, like I mentioned, is like your immediate business. These are the people that you're going to get paid off of likely in the next 60 to 90 days because you have them actively listed or they're actively looking. But what about those people that are just not really looking very quickly? I have a second board called prospects. So I'm going to go over here to my boards and I'm going to click on prospects. And this is, I only have two lists here. I have potential buyers and potential listings. These are people who came to me and said, I am interested in real estate, but not quite ready. So what you would want to do is you would want to make that card again. And you can actually go back to your pipeline and click on seller um, and you can move this, move this template and you can move it and change boards. So I can move it to um, mock pipe. I'm sorry, it's in mock pipeline. Where's prospects? Mm, oh, mock prospects right here. I'm sorry. And since this is my seller template, I want it on the potential listings. So I'm going to move it over there. So now when I go back to my mock prospects, I have this template there. So I can just copy it and I can name it um, Henry. And now I have Henry there. And I might go into Henry and say uh, lease is until October 2021. Uh, whatever it is he told me. So that way like weeks or months from now when I go to follow up with these people I can click on Henry and remember what he said or if I need to remember to check in with him at a certain time I can set a due date I can say I need to check in with Henry October 1st of 2020 and now it'll remind me that on October 1st I need to check in with Henry this board you will be amazed at how many people you have in this board and then what's cool is once Henry is ready to to sell you can move Henry back over to your pipeline and it'll ask, okay, you're moving it back to your pipeline. Which board do you want him under? 
Um, is he a buyer? Is he pre-listing? Move. So now he's gone from here, and when I go back to my pipeline, he's now right here where he needs to be. And then once he's actively listed, I'll move him here. And then once he's pending, I'll move him here. And then once he's closed, I'll move him here. And then after I finish you know, all the things I do after a closing, I just archive him. And now it's nice and clean. Y'all know I like to keep this nice and clean. I don't like to let this build up too much. But if you have some buyers, like this happens to me all the time. When I get a new buyer, the first thing I do is start here, even if they're not quite ready yet. I start here because I have my template here. So I'm going to copy it and I'll have Sally. Um, and so say I'm like working with Sally, but then she kind of falls off the earth and isn't as motivated as I thought she was. Um, now I'm like, okay, look, I, Sally does not need to be on my pipeline because she has put house hunting on hold. So I'm going to move Sally back to prospects because now she's not someone that's actively looking. She is now going to be on the potential buyers. So now when I'm doing my follow-up in my prospect sheet, I have Sally over here as potential buyers and you can add as many as you want. Um, see though, if you just add it straight from here, that it won't carry over your template that you made. So it'll just be a normal card. So that is why I always like to, when I get a new buyer or a new seller, I always start in my pipeline. I'm gonna put my template um, back over here. So I'm gonna move this back over to my pipeline under pre-listing. So anytime someone calls me, even if they're not quite ready, I always start, I always enter them into my Trello on the pipeline board so that I can copy um, the template. So I always start here, change the name, um, and then I will make my notes while they're talking to me on the phone of anything that they say right here. Maybe I'll add a due date. Um, and then if he tells me he's getting ready now, I'll leave him here. If he tells me that he's not going to be ready for another six months, I might move him over to my prospects list under potential listings. So now he's gone. You want to keep this clean and organized. If you log in once a week and just clean out your Trello and follow up with people, your system is going to be so great and easy. Um, I hope that this was helpful, and if you have any questions, um, let me know. I'm sure you can pay for stuff on here, and there is so much more that you could do. Um, you could even add your purchase agreements and everything inside each card. So like if you get a purchase agreement on South Haven, you can actually upload the document into this card. So when you click on it, all your documents are here. I don't get into all that, but because to me, I'm more using it just for the visual. I just want it to look like clean and simple, um, but it does do a lot of cool things. So if there's anything else that you need, um, just let me know. But that is the Trello class. This was my first time to do a screen recording class. I hope it's helpful to you and um, enjoy. I hope it helps your business.